Next, I want to talk about remote graphics. Last year, we introduced you to the idea of remote graphics. Why did we work on remote graphics? We worked on remote graphics for several reasons. And I'm going to highlight some of them. The reasons are, obviously, the way we work has changed. We don't sit at our desk anymore. As a result, we bring whatever computer we bring to work. They call it BYOD. Some people call it the consumerization of IT. But it's a relatively easy concept to understand. Back in the good old days, we used to get company cars. Who gets a company car today? Back in the good old days, we get company computers. It is almost ridiculous to get one in the future. You're already going to have a computer by the time you get to work, we hope. And so you, if you already had a computer, why wouldn't you want to just use that computer? Bring your own device, consumerization of IT. The network has now become completely heterogeneous. IT departments are going absolutely berserk. We also know that data is getting larger and larger. The architecture of the personal computer and the way we set up our corporate network is related to the type of work we were doing. It made more sense to copy the file from the server to the client, store it on swap space locally, we used to call them swap space, DRAM, disk, and you process it locally. You process it locally. When you're done with the result, you save it back to the file server. You have a copy of that data. I have a copy of that data. We all have a copy of that data. It's the antithesis of staying in sync. Well, today, the data is too big. We have customers who are copying so much data. It takes 24 hours to literally copy the data to another site for them to dink on it just to copy it another 24 hours. And by the time that they copy the back, the team locally has already changed the data. Data has become so large, whether you're designing CAD data or financial data, data is just so large anymore that it makes no sense to copy it to your PC. You now want to copy your PC to the data. You want to move the processing to the data. Notice cloud computing. Shazam wouldn't be possible if we all had our little Shazam program. It's almost nonsense. The future of computing made possible because of mobile computing, affected by large data, the way that we work, how we look at computers, is going to affect the architecture of the enterprise. Nearly a decade ago, we started to invent technology to make this possible. Last GTC, I talked about the virtual GPU. The remote graphics technology, the virtual GPU technology, and to, uh, to enable this new enterprise. This new enterprise where the data is actually in the server. We do computing in the server. But because we can process it so quickly, send you the graphics results so quickly that you think the computer is actually under your desk. You think that the computer is actually in your device. Remote graphics. So we described the technology last year. And this year, I'm pleased to say, and pleased to announce, that nearly all of the major players of the enterprise computing world are now partners and are in production. Citrix is in production. Microsoft is in production. VMware is in production. The NVIDIA grid processors are designed into these specialized servers from Cisco, from Dell, from IBM, HP. And there are 75 large-scale trials that are happening right now as we speak. Because people all have similar problems like this. This is one that you guys are going to read about, or you guys, gonna, you guys can go see in one of the sessions from Applied Materials. They build some of the world's most complex manufacturing equipment, semiconductors. You might think that the semiconductors are small, so the equipment is small. These, the equipment is room size. Thousands of engineers work on this simultaneously. 
moving the data to each one of their workstations, synchronizing them was just an impossible task. Finally, one day, they put the GPUs in the server, started working on remote graphics, and today, their engineers could sit anywhere. They could take their workstation home with them because there's nothing on it. There's nothing on that workstation. All of the work is still done in the server. It does it so fast that it, and it sends the output, the pixel outputs, the graphics outputs to your laptop or tablet so quickly that you think you're connected to the computer. You could do it from anywhere within the corporation because you're done doing it wirelessly. You could take it home. Security is much easier to manage. And because they run a global site, they follow the sun. Could you imagine copying that data following the sun? They now just follow the sun. Everybody's connected all the time. So you can hear more about their work, really exciting about their trial. There's 75 others like it, and we're now in production with grid enterprise servers. This is for enterprise computing, large-scale enterprise computing, where people have IT departments, and you want to be able to work on large data, collaborate, and be able to do your work on any device. And do it from anywhere. Well, there's, there are some people whose work can't be solved this way. And it turns out that, that um, there's a lot of small and medium businesses around the world who are designing little gadgets, they're creating commercials, they're outsourced, um, they're outsourcing partners for large enterprises, they're creating parts of a movie, they're a small medium business, they don't have an IT department, they don't have an enterprise server. They buy their computers from the Apple store. But they have computational problems and challenges just like the ones that I described earlier. They would like to have the ability to be remote, to be heterogeneous, to be able to work from anywhere, to be able to share and work on one massive database without having to synchronize it and copy it all over the place. And of course, security is a paramount concern for some of these small and medium businesses because oftentimes they're working on data that belongs to someone else. It could also be a single application, dedicated application environment. For example, if you were trying to figure out a way to create the modern showroom, the modern dealer, real estate's expensive, inventory is expensive, people want more and more styles, People want to personalize more and more. It's really, really hard to sell cars the old-fashioned way. How do you create the ability to do digital configuration, virtual configuration, buy your car in that modern way, but you don't have an IT department? You can't set up a workstation network. What if you have 600 million subscribers? They're spread out all over the world. They're your cable TV customers. 600 million of them, and cable television, as you know, cable set-top boxes are upgraded every, well, every time I move to a new house. So long as, so long as it's HD, I'm good to go. And so the ability for them to maintain and, and enhance the software when 600 million set-top boxes are all with different architectures that they purchased over the last 20 years. The software maintenance nightmare is paramount. What if we could put that in the cloud? But you need to have a remote control. You know, when I change the channel, I like it to happen today. I like it to happen right away. So how do you do that? Maybe that's a single application environment, doesn't need a general purpose server that could benefit from a different type of architecture. What if you're a small, medium business and, um, you know, you want to work in a modern way uh, with, without the support of a large IT department and you, you do your work on your workstation, but you want to be able to collaborate. You just want to walk away from your desk and bring all of your stuff with you. 
so that you could do a design review, you could share it with other people, you could argue with it with, with other people and make it better? How do you do that? And so our thinking is that what these environments need, what these work areas need, what these customers need, the way that they do their work, the problems they want to solve, is not a large rack of enterprise servers, but it's something much simpler than that. And we call it the world's first visual computing appliance. It's a visual computing appliance. It's not a server, it's a system. It's NVIDIA's first system. It's the first system we've ever created. It's an entire end-to-end -end system. All the software is integrated. The entire experience is integrated. It's a visual computing appliance. And we think that it's like, can we, um, can we change the slide now? Maybe if you could just, without going forward, but just can you reveal the NVIDIA visual computing appliance I couldn't imagine that being any more clumsy. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you all for coming. We're about to go into <laughs> the fifth part, if you're keeping track, of our talk. We're about to announce a brand new product, if, if you didn't pick up from that. Uh, so, so we created this appliance. It's an entire integrated system, and we call it the Grid VCA. Ladies and gentlemen, NVIDIA's first integrated system. Now, this particular system is for you in height. It was... Um, uh, it's, it fits into a server rack, and um, let's see what's inside it. Inside it are two of the highest performance Xeon processors, each with 16 threads. And they're connected to two, 392 gigabytes of system memory. Can you show that to me? And backed up by that, eight grid GPUs. Each with two of our most advanced Kepler GPUs. All of that is integrated into one single appliance. It's a little bit like a router. It's like a network stored, network storage device. You buy the box, and it comes with all the system software necessary for it. You, it has a hypervisor. It supports 16 virtual machines. These 16 virtual machines could run 16 completely different applications. It could be connected to as many devices as you would like it to be connected on your network. Each one of the devices simply needs to lo download and install a thin little client called the grid client. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the NVIDIA Grid VCA. And so, um, maybe, if, thank you. This, you could tell that this is where it got late last night. Okay, so this is the way that the VCA, the, the grid VCA works. It gets connected to your network, small group. As many people as you have could be connected to it. All they need is a little tiny client, kind of like a Netflix client, if you will, except when you pop open this client, your virtual workspace, your remote workspace, completely GPU accelerated shows up. As many people are, can be connected to it as you like, so if this particular office has 50 people, they can all effectively have a powerful workstation on their desk. It doesn't matter if it's a Mac. It doesn't matter if it's a PC or even an Android thin client. 
the computer in the back runs the applications, and all they see is the pixels. All they see are the pixels, and it's doing it so fast that you think those pixels are being generated by your computer. And so all of these users on the network all think that they have their own personal computer. All they think, they all think they have this super workstation on their desk. And if each one of them is some three to four to five thousand dollars, and you have 50 users on the network, you could imagine how the price or the value uh, is translated. Well, let's take a look at how it works. Okay, Ian, this is Ian, everyone. You've seen him before. Hi, Jason. Ian has done a lot of demos with us. And so, so this is, first of all, let me describe what you're looking at. You're looking at the grid VCA. <laughs> Can I go back to the last slide? <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're looking at the grid VCA. It's connected wirelessly to um, Ian's Macintosh. The applications that are running on the VCA, there could be 16 concurrent applications running. Okay? And so now we're going to look at Ian's Mac. You could tell I'm O time because I still call it a Macintosh. <laughs> yeah, so as Jensen mentioned, we, uh, we have the MacBook Pro here. And on the MacBook Pro, we have three workspaces. Uh, let me just launch them so you can see what's connected. So effectively, we have three workstations, three high-end workstations. They're all running different applications. You can see each one individually. Probably some of you will recognize this is Autodesk 3D Studio Max. And some of you also may know that Autodesk 3D Studio Max doesn't actually run on a Macintosh. But here, I've got the full interactivity and capability. You can see the ray trace image from the iRay renderer there. I got full interactivity with the application. I can manipulate it as it is. But then I can just as easily switch to something else. So for example, I have a, a tech preview of what Adobe Premiere would look like running on uh, the, grid pro, the grid VCA system. Now this video, that tell video. us what was that video all about? What's the big deal of that video? That video actually was a video that we shot. It's a red, it was shot in red 4K footage, and then we, we actually created a short HD movie of it, which is what you're looking at right now. And again, I've got full... And you could, you, could, you could process it in real time. You could do post-processing. You I could scrub. Scrub and things like that. I can actually just go ahead and add a blurriness factor to it. Look and, at that. Uh, Image processing in real time. As you can see... So not only, the, not, only, not only does it not matter that a particular application doesn't run on the Mac, that's right. The, the application is running so fast, and it's running at a performance level that's not possible in something of this form factor. Absolutely. And, and likewise, and as you see here, you can connect to multiple grid workspace sessions. If you had multiple so that you can actually jump between applications and, again, get full application performance. As if you had multiple workstations at your fingertips. That's right. And so, so just now as I was describing it, it's almost, I, I describe it as, as if you have your own personal high-end PC right under your desk, but that's in fact not stating it properly, right? You have, you have all of those workstations at your fingertips, and if you, if you wanted to access all 16 of them, I mean, that's really, quite frankly, possible. Absolutely. Yeah. And as another good example, we have, uh, we switched industries here, and we actually have an application, SolidWorks, which again, some of you may know, doesn't actually run on the Macintosh, but again, we've, we've got a fully interactive 3D workstation application. I can just go and manipulate the view. I can go and explode this particular model. I can then move it around. Now what's what's again. Really, really interesting is that all the applications just work. Absolutely. Right? All this is a virtual environment. It's a virtual machine. But within that virtual machine, and there's 16 of them, those virtual machines are all fully GPU accelerated. Absolutely. And they're compatible with all the software. Absolutely. All so if I wanted to load Battlefield 3 on here, it would just work. Yes, yeah. that would, that's absolutely true. All that we've taken for granted in the workstation world is now able to move directly to the grid VCA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we have a special guest here today. Uh, he's the vice president of R&D of SolidWorks. And SolidWorks is one of the most important applications in the world. And so um, why don't you guys all help me welcome Jean Pablo Bassi, who is the VP of R&D of SolidWorks, one of our best partners. Now, 
John Paul, you know, there's a lot of people in the audience, and they're not, I, I don't know if they all know what SolidWorks does, but what, what is it that people use SolidWorks for, and, and what is the business that you guys are in, and what are the customers like? Yeah, so uh, SolidWorks is, uh, uh, is about uh, creating the software, the application that are used by companies to design and create products. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do what is called the computer-aided uh, design, mm -hmm. products for computer-aided design. Now, what uh, are some of the products that, that we have probably seen that SolidWorks was involved in designing? Well, we are present in uh, about 11 industries, so anything that we, you can name probably has been designed using SolidWorks products from uh, medical devices, uh, automotive, in the aerospace, uh, uh, from uh, consumer products, uh, everything. So everybody probably has a credit card in uh, his uh, pocket and, uh, and a company called Data Card manufactures the machines to create uh, uh, credit cards. So we are present also in uh, the uh, architectural uh, environment. So probably, you know, uh, furniture, uh, everything that goes into your house has been designed with SolidWorks as well. If you have a sub-zero, uh, refrigerator, it is designed by, um, with, uh, with uh, SolidWorks. And, uh, you know, I come from the East Coast. We have to blow the snow from time to time. I went uh, to uh, Home Depot and, and bought uh, Arias snow blower. Well, it was designed uh, with the SolidWorks as well. I wouldn't be surprised if everything at I IKEA is designed with SolidWorks. Uh, well, uh, exactly. <laughs> Probably exactly. Pretty as close. a matter of fact, applied <laughs> material is, uh, uh, is our customer. So, machines uh, uh, created to create other machines like your, mm -hmm. uh, your, uh, uh, your card, your, uh, your cards are designed, those machines are designed using our products. So, mm -hmm. we, have, we are present in 80 countries. We have uh, uh, reached, uh, actually overcome 2 million users this year, and uh, we have 100, about 180,000 different companies, and again, uh, 80 countries, and uh, about 800 solution partners, so people that develop software on, on top of our software. I see, so let me see if I understand. So the way that you, go, you guys go to market, what is the distribution channel? You guys go through VARS, solution we partners? We have VARS, uh -huh. we only have VARS, we distribute only through VARS that are present all over the world, mm -hmm. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, some of them are here as well mm, because mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. are very much interest, uh, interested in uh, your grid appliance mm -hmm. and uh, because it's very relevant for their customers. As a matter of fact, the large majority of our customers are small and medium businesses. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, for them, mm -hmm. uh, the agility, uh, the capability to access uh, uh, high-end computer resources on demand is extremely important. So you see the... Uh, Motosys uh, uh, company, the one that is uh, designed here, that you show here, is uh, mm, perhaps the archetype of our, our uh, average customers. Now, so this is the, f the world's fastest electric, electric yes, motorcycle. Yes, and they want, so this is an example of our, uh, of our customers. So this guy, Michael Sis, I don't know if you ever met him, but very interesting character. So he created this company in 2003. 2006, he decided to go electrical only, uh -huh. and 2009, 11, and 12, he won uh, the Isle of Man competition. Uh, so with wow. the average speed, 100 uh, uh, miles per hour average, they can reach peak speed of 200 uh, uh, miles per hour, and they contend that they have the most aerodynamic motorcycle ever built. And to do that, they, of course, need uh, to access uh, at any time uh, you know, applications that are able to help them make uh, fundamental design uh, mm -hmm, decisions. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. for our customers, the reason why the grid is uh, so much relevant for our customers is that their requirement is to access their data anytime, anywhere, from any device. And with the engineering grade type of precision and rendering capabilities. And uh, now all this is becoming possible for this. Mm -hmm. Our customers already use uh, remote computing with the current technologies, but for them, the next step is, okay, give me the emotion that is communicated by my products. This is extremely important for them. And you cannot communicate the emotion and the experience that you have around the product mm -hmm. unless mm -hmm. you provide uh, real-time uh, graphics rendering, real-time uh, capabilities as the ones that you have seen there on now any what, type of device. Now, one of the things that, that in, in working with uh, SolidWorks and your partners that we've heard back in the early engagements, and, and we were surprised by some of the, the feedback that was really interesting. Apparently, um, their workforce, uh, their workforce is uh, sometimes changing in size, mm -hmm. and so it's good to have um, the ability to share a large computer among the workforce. Yep. Uh, the, the work that they do is changing. 
from time to time. They're not doing the same type of work. And so you would like to have um, the, the, uh, the grid appliance be dedicated to one group, all of its horsepower dedicated to one group for a while, then maybe to the simulation group for a while, yep. and, and so on and so forth. And, and of course, um, they, would li they really love the fact that you install one machine, you install one software to the machine, now everybody has it installed on their devices. Exactly. And then you have to install the so SolidWorks is, is a complicated piece of software. You don't want to install it from one machine after another machine yep. after another. As a matter of fact, the problem of deployment is one of uh, the major problems of our customers. We also have very large customers. One customer of ours has, in fact, uh, like 130 design offices around the world. Mm -hmm. And for them, uh, problem number one it's not about the product, uh, but it's about uh, deploying the product. So mm -hmm. this type mm -hmm. of devices will, uh, will help tremendously. And as you said, the, the way people work today is dramatically different. So those small companies are very nimble, very creative. They can survive only because they beat everybody else in imagination. And these capabilities unleash their imagination. Mm -hmm. So they can uh, instantly create a network of, uh, of companies in order to collaborate on the design of a new product. Mm -hmm. And they can uh, very quickly and safely show the result of their ideas to customers. They can take uh, a, a visor or mm -hmm. a, a simple device mm -hmm. anywhere in the world. That's really terrific. And the data are safely in, yeah. the, in, the, in, their, in their vault. They're safely in their office most well, of the time, in their garage. John Parlo, <laughs> it's, it's really a fabulous working relationship between our two companies. The, yep. the years of partnership has, been, uh, has made it possible for us to do this together. And I'm looking forward to deploying Grid with you. Absolutely. All Thank right. you very much. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Okay, the next person up, uh, Jean Parlo and, and NVIDIA are partners. And we work together on making possible the grid platform to be useful to the end customer. Uh, next up, we're going to have a, a gentleman who's, who's local who runs a business, his own business. He started this business when he came out of high school. His name is James Fox. Uh, where is James? James, come on up on stage. Now, James, James is one of the earliest users of Grid. And this is when, when Grid was a little bit rickety. And, uh, and we were able to, to get James to, to try it. And, um, and he's, been, he's been using it uh, for real work. Now, how, James, how has Grid, what do you think about Grid? How has it changed the way that you work? Uh, what are your early reactions of using it? Well, earth shattering is what gets used a lot in the office. For us, uh, we're a small, nimble company, much like was being talked about. And we expand and contract pretty rapidly when mm -hmm. we, whenever we bring on more work. And with the grid, we're able to do that instantaneously. Where before, um, we don't have an IT department. We have a very technical savvy VFX. You're the IT department, from what I understand. Yeah, I help. I, yeah. I may, mostly just mess things up. <laughs> but um, the, with the grid, we just launch right into it immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we get people, whether remote, or local, and they get right to work. Now, one of the things that you, you've told me is that's really amazing is, is you create you create a piece, and it's it's a it's a it could be a commercial, it mm -hmm. could be a, a video introduction like the one we saw today, and then you take it to your customer, and right there at the customer, they would like to have it changed, and it's the last moment. That's the last moment. They would like somehow, maybe the color's a little off, maybe they would like to render the, the image a little bit differently, and they would like to have that last minute change. And, and with Grid, because you can now log, remotely connect to it, it's as if you brought Grid with you wherever you go. Absolutely, I mean, we've had it happen in the past where clients want changes and we actually have to haul around our 75 pound desktop workstations to and literally take hard care drive of the stacks to try we to have get all the same on site performance. Uh, and we'd actually be backstage right here working on something like that. So with the grid, we literally take care of it with a laptop. And we have all the same performance from a high powered NVIDIA workstation right there. You know, an uh, NVIDIA powered workstation right there. Mm -hmm. So now the other thing that you, you guys have experienced and, and you shared with me is is um, you're, you're uh, sometimes everybody is, has um, subscribed one of the virtual machines in Grid. But sometimes, you know, it's just a couple of you guys left at the office, and, and guess what? You would like to have all of the machine to yourself. And so one of the things that Grid does is it has that flexibility, that flex capability to give you um, whatever available resource that's available at, on Grid. Well, right. I mean, the way we do it now is we have chairs with wheels on them, and we roll from computer to computer, right, to mm -hmm. be able to do things. Now we can just sit there and we can access all the power at one workstation and go through and do everything that we need and combine the force of the grid 
in one spot, which means for me and my visual effects supervisor, we can sit there and stay late and actually get some work done. That's the way we like it. That's right. James, thanks for all your help. Thank you. Thanks for trying it. Thank you. Okay. So we saw Grid on SolidWorks. We saw, we saw SolidWorks running on Grid. We saw Adobe running on Grid. We saw um, uh, Autodesk running on Grid. Uh, now I'd like to show you uh, another example of a grid application. And before we go there, let's roll a video of how the point of sales and how car companies would like their purchasing, depart purchasing experience to be. Isn't that amazing? Now that's the way Audi, a forward-leaning, technology-savvy company would like us to buy cars. And what you saw just now, that is not faked. That is all real. And it was created, I still remember years ago when, when uh, I went to visit him, uh, he, uh, he was already working on pieces of this and it was really quite amazing to see it come together. Um, to have the visionary who made this possible, they really implemented the whole thing, all of the technology. Obviously, it's, it's a wonderful experience. Obviously, it's not something we're going to enjoy in every single showroom. The amount of technology necessary to make that possible, you don't need just an IT department. You need a full engineering department. And so this is something that you can do maybe in 10 places in, in, around the world, but you're not going to do this in the 100,000 showrooms and dealerships all around the world for all of the different manufacturers. And so um, help, help me welcome Ludwig Fuchs. Where is he? There he is. <laughs> Ludwig, good to see you. Ludwig is the founder, one of the co-founders and the CEO of RTT, Real-Time Technologies. Your product, and he's so understated, his product, Delta Gen, is the standard for automotive styling and driving power walls for virtual design reviews and collaboration all over the world. When I go visit a car company, it's his Delta Gen that's driving all the demos. Well, uh, several years ago, Audi reached out to him and asked him to help reinvent the future of point of sales, to reinvent the way that merchandising is done and how people ought to enjoy cars. Tell, tell us about the experience. Why was it so important to Audi? What, would, what did they have in mind? And what are some of the technical challenges you guys had? Well, it was really um, Olympic spirit driving that, one can say. You know, it was opened uh, right, right with the opening of the, of the Olympics in London. And so they, they, they wanted to show how, how they see the future um, mm -hmm. of sales of the dealership, but they also wanted to, to underline their claim of Vorsprung durch Technik, so to be, 
to be ahead in, in, in making use of latest technology. I knew that. Also, mm -hmm. also in, that, in that respect. There are two people in the audience that I see who understood what you said, but nobody else. <laughs> but it sounded great. <laughs> <laughs> And and um, and the technical challenge of making that possible. Now, now, what are the what are the computing gear that you put into all these showrooms? What what did it take to do all that? Well, it it, it really took a lot, and in uh, a, a lot of hardware, um, um, a lot of people and resources driving that. But one also has to see that this does rely on on the fact of Audi um, already having Delta Gen or RTT mm -hmm. models in place. Um, which they use for their um, configurator. But because they want to reuse that asset. They, they, they wanted to reuse uh, um, th those assets. So it, not everything had to be created from scratch. But um, it really was a, was a major effort. Mm -hmm. And like you say, uh, now the challenge is to make this effort available to more people, to mm -hmm. more dealers, um, to more consumers. And, and that is really where VCA um, will will help us a lot. Mm -hmm. So driving one of the, the things economics. Our right. relationship okay. started when we moved workstation technology from these million dollar workstations to these PCs equipped with our GPUs. I mean, that's really when we started to know each other, and Absolutely. we've been working together for years. And as a result of that, as a result of that that discontinuity, that transformation, we made it possible to allow. Um, the type of experience that a few thousand people or a few hundred people in the world could have to tens of thousands of people in the world could have. Yes. And now you could yes. imagine these showrooms being around the world and you could, you could expose that capability to even more people. But these showrooms we're are still very complicated to build. But right? we'll, we'll the current become, showrooms. We'll become providers of visual energy, mm -hmm. right? Oh, I like that. We'll, uh -huh. we'll become providers of such energy and, and enabling um, Audi and others to really um, install new processes, new ways of interacting with consumers, mm -hmm. um, the whole customer journey, how it's called, with many, many touch points. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that uh, has, been, it has been underlined. I mean, hard to believe for petrol heads like you and me, but the, the, the smart guys from McKinsey found out that the digital sales experience has become equally important than the physical um, mm. one, just taking a look at things. So, and, and, and that really is the point here, um, to go into those new ways and, and us really um, bringing mm -hmm. the now, things to the table that, that um, make it happen. Now, one of the things that's really amazing is, is um, the digital experience. The, the last time I bought a car, it was using your configurator, and it was completely digital, sight completely unseen. Uh, they didn't even have a sh car in the showroom yet. I've never seen one at all, and it was all, it was all on your, your configurators. I chose the leather, the trim, I chose everything, and it came out, it, it was rendered beautifully, and it came out exactly the way I enjoyed it. And, and the thing that, that, that uh, we talked about that years ago, and, and um, hard to say whose idea VCA is, but VCA was really a germ of a conversation you and I had years ago. And, and the reason for that was we wanted to put graphics in the cloud. I mean, suppose we were to put these things, supercomputers, in the cloud, and we can now stream the output of the graphics to all of these thin clients or whatever computers they are, and it could just be an H.264. And years later, um, uh, we're here to, to show the world the, the, uh, the result of our collaboration, that, that you have um, finally uh, made possible this configuration, photorealistic configuration that we saw in the demo earlier, and we're going to show it to you now. Now, before I show it to you, this is what's, what's happening. Uh, Ludwig's, what he calls point of sales configurator, is running on the grid, and the grid is streaming to, uh, to uh, two devices. The first device is the tablet. The UI is being streamed to the tablet. So now you can control the tablet. We can control the tablet and choose uh, whatever it is that we would like to, whatever configuration we would like to have. The controls of that choice goes back to grid. The controls of that choice, all those, all those selections, streams back to grid. It instantaneously processes the information, captures the image, compresses the image, and sends the image back to, if you were in a showroom, it would just be a normal television. It would just be a smart television, anything that can connect up an Ethernet cable to. It would render that image, 
on the television, and in our particular case, we're going to put it up on the big screen. And so why don't we show it to them? So Ludwig bought, brought his, uh, his little demo. It's running on a, on a tablet here. Um, uh, and so show us only one Let's we buy something really cool. You and I both love only one we get something that nobody's ever seen before. Um, yeah, we've, we've picked um, the, the R8. Um, uh, that's the only here. one we would um, it's, that's it's the, the only, it's one, the only we would, one that you really and I would drive. Um, qualifies for, for our conversation. Yeah, right. um, and um, obviously, V10, of we, course, we have the we Lamborghini have V10, engine. We have um, silver, black, and But and silver and is too things. pedestrian. Everybody has silver. But, Give me um, something else. We, we, we know that you have um, peculiar taste, and, and so we should um, go for you know, maybe a broader range of colors yeah, that we yeah. have here. Yeah, there you go. Um, and um, so... Are you sure that's uh, aggressive enough? Uh, don't you like it? Uh, okay, uh, there you go. There, there you had go. it, you had it. Yeah. There you okay. go, something like that. So, obviously we cannot only change the color, we also have a range of wheels available for you. Now you could you could this is um, you could do this in two D though, right? This uh, the experience that I just I saw you could really almost do that in two D. I mean I see that on you know, with Flash. Okay, well, you can't do that. Okay. Uh huh. So two D will give you a hard time doing that. Right? <laughs> no kidding. Okay. Well, I want to I want to see I want to see the front view though. The front view. Yeah. Okay. The front view. Here you have it. Wow. Okay. Okay. But Can what about my leather? Did, did we select my leather? The leather. Let's go to the interior. Um, pick some. Pick some leather here. But again, we should go for what is called Audi exclusive part here, and um, um, we can do some in individual look for your seats here. So um, give it some red as well. Pick those, those parts. And so we have the seats. And um, equally, we can change the stitching for the leather. Now, how do I know this, this isn't canned? I mean, can I, now, now can I go outside? Of course. And look, look let's inside? Let's have I want to QA your. Let's, let's have a look here. So let's have a look around. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, that's not canned. And so the thinking and is that grid, um, the grid VCA could uh, be in some, uh, either the headquarters or it could be in, in, this, in, in one particular dealer. And through literally the internet, we can stream the outputs to all of its neighboring or all of its partner or its you know, sons and daughter dealerships uh, exactly. in a particular area. Absolutely. So we can connect those malls. We can go into cities uh, um, easily um, and you know, provide an interactive experience. But also, salespeople can go out mm -hmm. and with, with the tablet. Oh, no kidding. Right, and, right. Of and, course. You know, visit you at home yeah. and show you, show you all the stuff. And render all it right there on the tablet. Render it available. Right. Render it out. Um, and then we can also send the information back and uh, create an individualized movie for you. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know. You can now, of course, kids, these these, uh, these digital kiosks or these digital point of sales, um, these future modern or the modern uh, uh, auto dealers, th th this is really something that they, they're really striving to do because it allows them to reduce their real estate cost. They don't have to have as many cars on the lot. Apparently, the the the, the customization and the personalization of a car increases the value of the car to you, and so you're it's willing to pay more money for it. With, without a question, it's more. It, it, it's highly important. Between 50 to 90 percent of the margin per car come from whatever type of individualization. Is that right? That's yes. no kidding. Yeah. And so they reduce their inventory costs. They reduce their real estate cost. They enhance the user experience, and they enhance the margin plus delivering a better better experience to you. And lots of fun. Mm -hmm. Now the benefit, of course, of this and, and the work that we're doing is now we could deploy into those hundred thousand dealers around the world much, much more easily. But the idea of having to go into each one of the dealerships and setting up a workstation is just unfathomable. You cannot consider something like that. No IT department in the world would be able to do that. But however, now we, with us delivering this experience over to cloud, we could just ask people to buy a TV 
download an app, and they're good to go. Absolutely. Right? Okay. Thank, Ludwig, thank you us. very much. It's thank great you. to see you. Congratulations. Good work.